It had never previously occurred to me that I would do anything other than return to Hamilton, Ohio. It is a small but bustling city in the southwest corner of the Buckeye State, a vibrant community filled with friendly people determined to build upon the success of the city's past. And there has been great success here, the cornerstone of that found in industry. If you wanted it, it was made here in Hamilton. What may surprise you is that a native son who changed an industry is rarely mentioned on the lips of those who call Hamilton home. If you walk down the street, you know, public street in Hamilton, go to the shopping center, 99% of people have never heard of it. On the corner of Dayton and North 7th Street sits a classic home that once served as the residence of one of the most influential families in Hamilton's history. German immigrant and successful industrialist George Adam Rentschler moved to this house in 1901. He and his wife Phoebe raised five children here, one that included a future aviation pioneer, Frederick Brandt Rentschler. Seen here in an old newspaper clipping holding a cap gun celebrating the 4th of July. This serious look as a boy apparently carried over into manhood. He was always, you know, a man of order and, and thinking and planning. Rentschler's father, George, called Old Adam by family, was a shop foreman who invested $200 in his own foundry in 1875, partnering with other entrepreneurs to create a manufacturing empire. Perhaps he's best known as the president of Hooven Owens Rentschler Company, overseeing the construction of steam and diesel engines. An empty factory with a worn cornerstone bearing the Rentschler name is all that remains of a once mighty manufacturing power. They made a lot of the machinery that ran the machines here that made the industry and this is where their importance comes in. I merely had vague ideas of returning to Hamilton and our family interests there, but intended to take some time to be sure of it all. Success sparked more success. The Rentschler name one that garnered respect. Old Adam kept growing his enterprise and in 1904 constructed what was the tallest building in Hamilton, the eight-story Rentschler building. Five years later, he would embark into the world of automobiles, creating the Republic Motor Car Company, a short-lived venture that would end in 1919. Frederick Rentschler was the company's secretary and treasurer, sending personalized letters to customers confirming the purchase of the quote, classiest of all automobiles. A tribute to the classic car is in the form of art, anchored next to a busy Hamilton intersection. The car is never much talked about, mostly the, the lament that there isn't one around. To get a sense of why or why not the Rentschler manufacturing legacy isn't celebrated more, perhaps it's best to get a view from... This is Fred's car, and that's the same car right there. A Rentschler. And it was yellow. Not far from where industry once boomed, in a scenic countryside close to Hamilton's downtown, is the quaint home of Thomas Rentschler, a retired banker and Frederick's great nephew. Nobody ever, I don't think anybody ever in our family thought we were more important than the next guy. Books on Ohio history are neatly organized on a shelf, but you would be hard pressed to find anything that boasts about the family name or what has been accomplished. A wedding gift from Frederick and his wife Faye is neatly placed in the dining room. The only mention of flight is on a kitchen counter, a recent biography of the Wright brothers. Humility, it seems, is a family value passed down from generation to generation. There was no bragging in our family. There was no finger pointing, no applauding. It just happened. What is clear is that the manufacturing foundation Frederick Rentschler's father created had a significant impact. While anecdotes of his childhood are few, Pratt & Whitney's founder understood what was necessary to structure a successful manufacturing operation. One historian says about Fred Rentschler, he was probably one of the few people early in aviation who not only knew how to run a machine tool, thanks to his father, and run a factory, but also had the business acumen to be able to build a company and make it successful over the long term. But it would be a long-term success story that would flourish in Connecticut rather than Ohio. The Wasp engine and all the innovations Rentschler helped pioneer after the Wasp were born on the East Coast. Maybe he just wanted to stand on his own two feet, which he did very well. I believe I next discussed this whole general picture and my hopes with my brother Gordon. He first wondered why we should not take the project to Hamilton. 
I explained that I was sure we had no facilities there which were adequate and there might be real questions as to whether the plants there could stand the drain of possible capital requirements. The stony-faced Hamilton child with a cap gun would go on to change the world, a bold venture his father questioned. I think the direct quote is a damn fool business, mostly for sportsmen, which it was in the early 1920s. But Hamilton's own Frederick Brandt Rentschler was no fool, rather a man who studied his family's success, applying principles he learned in his youth to create a legacy that would change the way we fly. Pratt & Whitney's story begins in Connecticut, but in a way, goes back much farther than that. If it wouldn't have been for the Rentschlers, the people who worked in those factories wouldn't have had a camper or a summer vacation. They, they provide a lot of, it provided a lot of substance. Their kids go to college. That wouldn't have been without those industrial jobs. It would be Rentschler's idea, his vision that created jobs, careers, a legacy in his adoptive home. It seemed to me that if we ourselves knew what we wanted to do, it should make little difference where we were located. <laughs>